when we discussed it earlier, and you mentioned that the, the Guernica painting was a, a very clear um, indication to you that, um, yes. that art should be feared too. Yes, it did uh, actually remind me of, the, of that story when I... Uh, and the reason that I got the blue, again, really it is something that works both by instinct and uh, the practicalities. I came one morning and uh, it was early, the cleaners were still around. Uh, and I thought, I really want to cover this thing today, you know. And uh, I saw the cleaners, you know, they had the rolls of blue rubbish bags. Yeah. I said, can I have a few of those, please? And they were so kind, they gave it to me. So I just stretched it and put it there. Yeah. But of course, one cannot get away from the ways that we associate with colors and materials. Uh, some people responded to it as, you know, the, the body bags. Yeah. Um, when I put them there, I, rem I remembered the story of uh, the Guernica painting of Picasso's, you know, which is hung in the United Nations uh, building. Uh, and. Uh, just before the United States and the winning coalition went to Iraq, they had to convince uh, the world uh, that, you know, basically Iraqi regime was up to no good, masters, you know, weapons of masters, and all that stuff. And uh, when the meeting of the UN delegates took place and Colin Powell was going to tell them, show them the pictures, you know, how it is proven that, you know, there are all these movements in Iraq and um, wars of mass destruction being concealed and uh, all that. But there was the demand for Guernica to be covered and uh, they, they just draped the blue cloth over it, yeah. apparently. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what it reminded me of. And I thought, what am I doing? Am I covering my own internal kind of fight with myself? cover this thing today, you know, I see this thing, every day I see this thing. Uh, and, and the figure itself had, had, had a degree of serenity about it, just basically mute, the figure sitting there, just like a thinking, thinking person. Uh, so I multiply that, multiply that, multiply that, and then Am I going to keep these, you know, discs of Lebanese bread, you know, with the text on there, with the violin bow stuck in there? And uh, I use the Lebanese bread, and I put the words on it, history of terror, terror of history, whether it is the history that keep repeating itself, bringing about the terror, or is it the terror itself? What is it that is stuck in us? Or yeah. what is it that we are stuck in? I find that very, very difficult question. So to see that over and over and over and over, you know, keep allowing that, keep hammering.
memorial monument memorializing. Uh, it is something that I think we are stuck with it for a long time to come. We need to have certain fallback to the memory in order to be able to take a step forward. So what becomes important for me, how we memorialize, why some forms of memorialization takes on monumentality, that you need a monument to memorialize something. Why not something small to remember an action? It was a kind of action of memorializing a, an experience. Every day I see this thing, every day I see this thing. The work is not figurative itself, but it does relate to the body. process of memorializing and dememorializing, you know, forgetting and remembering. I think that should be kept fluid, which I'm content with. If this may reflect something of that process that I'm talking about, uh, either directly or by implication, that's a bonus. If it doesn't, it will just be a childish, childish play. Subtle. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is subtle good? <laughs> <laughs>